Hello and a very warm welcome back to the channel. On today's video we look at another emergency radio from Realistic this time, the TRC-1004. Now this radio was released here in the UK in the early 1980s and it uh, had to compete alongside the Maxcom 7E and of course the Cybernet that if you haven't already seen my video on please uh, do go and watch because we're going to be testing this radio against the Cybernet a little later on. This is one of these popular radios that of the time to keep in the car in case of an emergency should you break down you can just pull this uh, out of the out of the trunk of the car and then uh, pop the magnetic antenna on the roof and get in touch with somebody to come and help you. Now this is another smart unit that some of my viewers in the States might well recognize and this is because it was packaged over there in an AM version as the TRC-412. Now I think happened to think that this version looks very much like one of those very early mobile phones <laughs> just from the styling of it and I saw this eBay listing for one and I thought I would put these pictures in for you to have a look at to see what you thought but uh, all of the components with uh, regard to uh, the radio we have here are the same apart from the radio itself and the bill receipt there looks it's clocking in at 70 odd dollars over here in the uk i could only find a listing for this radio at 79 pounds which seems fairly reasonable at the price and uh, but it had to compete with the maxcom as well and of course the cybernet radio there um, however it was quite expensive compared to the price of a normal rig at the time and uh, the 70 uh, seems to in all of the magazines that i've looked at anyway uh, to be advertised much more of course this would have been in the tandy catalog though over here in the united kingdom so it's less likely to have been advertised in sort of other publications but it's a really nice clean unit, a very nice clean lines and design, typical realistic design actually. If you look at all the fashion on the mouldings and the, the lines on the back of the unit, it really does, you can really see that the same guys that worked on the walkie talkies definitely worked on the design and the structure of this radio because it, it has some of very similar features to those sets. Now, um, the, one of the big letdowns with all of these radios is the, is the magma. And as you can see on this one, it's particularly poor and I'm not too sure how good the coax is there it's very very thin coax so perhaps on the test we'll use the Cybernat antenna which is in much better shape uh, I don't want to of course uh, damage these radios whilst testing them as it's only just a little bit of fun really so anyway taking a much closer look at the radio you can see the features here it has the 4 watt and the 0.4 watt uh, um, a reduction as was required by law over here in the UK at the time and uh, not, not that it's something very many people People would probably use particularly in an emergency situation so um, but they got it they had to meet the standards at the time uh, and a really nice uh, nicely made uh, set this with a good controls good quality pots the channel selector switch is very precise and and it feels good and both the volume and the receiving range <laughs> uh, and nomenclature which is very strange I know it does read odd but you've got to remember this was designed for people that weren't really CB people so uh, I, I think they kind of just sort of dumbed it down a little bit but um, we'll get this on the test bench and we'll do some checks on it first do a little tweak and then we'll take it out to site okay uh, we're connected up to the test set so let's turn it on and see what it's doing okay we're on channel 20 we'll just uh, turn the receiving range uh, dial down uh, we're at least hearing some static there so that's always a good sign okay we're in four watt mode and we'll try a transmit and it's doing four watts and in low power mode it's doing 0.4 of a watt which is as it should be and it certainly looks to be on frequency as well as we look at the uh, frequency on the SDR we can see it's absolutely spot on okay we do a, a quick check of uh, deviation one two one two one two one two okay that's a little bit low we'll bring that up a little bit but uh, it's not far off and that's it with its uh, cover open you just click one lead onto the speaker there to get a sign ad reading and for 12 decibel sign ad it's doing 0.89 of a microvolt at the moment so that's not actually too shabby that's uh, quite reasonable 0.8 um, we might be able to get it a little bit better but we'll get it all uh, tuned up 
and uh, I'll give you some figures once we've, we've tuned it up. Hope we can run it at 13.2 volts according to the service manual. So I'm hoping that on transmit we should get somewhere near 4 watts and uh, that'll give us a, a nice reference uh, against the ZX1. So uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get all this done and then uh, we'll click back to, uh, to it reassembled and ready to take out on the road with Mick. Right, well we've got a little bit more out of it. We've got, um, we've got the full 4 watts on transmit now. And, uh, but it's a little, tiny little bit deaf on receive. It's just under 1 microvolt for 12 decibel cyanide. But you could still hear it down to about 0.3. So I think it should still be okay out, on, out in the field. And uh, we've got the rest of it set up. It's it actually wasn't really that far off at all. Um, I'll just quickly show you the, um, the transmit power. I was actually just shy of the the four the full four watts before, but now we're actually okay. We're actually bang on uh, four watts now, as you can see there. And the the uh, deviation is spot on now as well. One two one two one two. Okay, between two point two and two point five. Perfect. Well, I think we're done. We're all sorted. We're ready to go to site. So the next shot you'll see of me, I'll be sat in the car at the first location, which will be three miles from Mick, and we'll see how well we get through. Right, we're here again at the uh, first location, and uh, but this time we've got choices. Uh, and so let's pretend we're broken down again and run out of petrol, and uh, we've got two choices. We've got the realistic and the easy com today, and we're going to pop the. The normal mag mount on the roof, so uh, we're going to put the, the bigger mag mount on the roof so it just makes the signal that a little bit stronger because we are testing the radios really, not the mag mounts. And uh, I wonder if anyone of you had any luck last night. It was the 40th anniversary of the uh, FMCB becoming legal here in the UK. And uh, if you did manage to get any contacts or anything going, just please leave uh, uh, those messages down in the comments below. I'd be interested to know. It was very quiet where I was, I didn't hear so much going on. But um, let's see if we can raise Mick and do a test. We're going to test here. Here, which is three miles from uh, from Mick and then we're going to do another test which is about six miles. Crikey back before the days of mobile phones it must have been quite a relief to have found in the boot that you had two options uh, both the Easycom and the Realistic here. Um, if you haven't already seen the video on the Easycom please do uh, go and check this out because it is a fantastic little unit and um, I say we do have the option of both today so we'll plug in the auxiliary socket let's assume our breakdown isn't electric <laughs> electric in uh, nature and uh, we'll fetch this bad boy out first and see if we can uh, hatch Mick on it and uh, we'll do a test between the two. Right, channel 25 looks nice and clear. Uh, all oh look, I think we know someone that's there. Let's try him again. Hi Mick, I'm, uh, I'm now on the, the Realistic 1004. You certainly sounded quite good on that little over there. Do you want to come back with an over so we can uh, show the viewers how good this sounds? It sounds really quite good actually. Well, that certainly sounded pretty good, didn't it? Um, I think that probably sounded better than the Easycom. We'll try the Easycom next, but uh, just wait for Mick to come back and then uh, we'll cut in some footage from his end. Uh, bearing in mind, it's not going to be as clear his end uh, as it is up here. I'm on some elevated ground and uh, he, of course, is in a sort of fairly built up area. So it's not going to be quite as clear his end, but let's have a listen and see what it sounds like. OK, OK, right, yes, uh, I'm out here at location one, three miles away from you, Mick, and I'm testing the realistic TRC 1004, another breakdown radio, which was released in the early 80s alongside uh, uh, the 7E and uh, the Easycom, which we're going to test in a minute. And uh, this certainly is sounding excellent at this end. We're using the stereo magma antenna on the car roof, we're not using the supplied antenna that came with this radio because it's in particularly poor condition. And we thought as we're checking the radios against each other that we would just use a common stereo because it gives us better performance. OK, mate, I wonder what that sounds like at your end. And uh, once I finish this over, you can, uh, or you're over, you can stop recording. I still think the Easycom possibly wins out on the looks side. I don't know what you guys think. Uh, it looks lovely, doesn't it? It really does. So uh, let's try uh, let's try Mick on this one. Hi there, Mick. I'm uh, on the Easycom now. I wonder what that sounds like, Rog. Yeah, now this is a little bit bassier compared to the other 
and fall. And when you get the videos, you you will notice that. Ah, oh, okay. Are you recording at your end now, Mick? No, I'm just about to start recording. And, uh, hold on. Yes, I am recording at my end. Now, over to you, Paul. Yeah, Roger D. I think someone might have come up on the side there. You see, that's 40-year uh, anniversary traffic. Um, but yeah, you sound great. Uh, really, really good. Like I say, I'm at the three-mile location here with the Easy Com. And uh, uh, you sound as good on the Easy Com as you do on the Realist. There's no real discernible difference I can hear on receiver. And uh, I think we just like to say just a bit of a clarity of audio on my transmit. Would you agree with that, Roger? Yes, I would agree. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. It's just a slight difference on the tone between tone of audio between the two radios, but still an excellent copy, Paul. Yeah, likewise, uh, Mick, you're a fantastic copy with me. OK, let's move over to location two. You can stop recording your end. Uh, we'll move over to the second location, which is six miles away, and we'll run the same tests. And it's just started to rain. Right, we're here at the second location. This is location B, and this is about six miles away from Mick. And uh, it's a slightly tougher uh, test um, for him, um, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it does seem to work okay with CB and UHF and VHF radios. If you watch the channel, you'll recognise this location anyway. Okay, so let's go with the realistic first and see how Mick picks us up. Yeah, this location seems to be a lot tougher, uh, a location two. Um, for the realistic. We can hear Mick, but he's not hearing me very well, and I'm not quite sure why that is. Okay, Mick, uh, do you want to give us an over, and we'll uh, we'll check the receive out, but it doesn't look like transmit's quite as strong this end, Rog. Yeah, I think you said you want me to give you an over, and the transmit is not quite as strong. Is that right, Rog? Yeah, Rog, yeah, you're, you're good with me. You're good with me. I just don't think it's uh, quite as good with you, is it? And then you'll see what it's like if you want as a, as a comparison between the three, three and the, is it six more? I forget what this one is. Yeah, do a quick re record and let us know when you're ready. And let us know when you're ready and just record it and then we'll, we'll try the easy com. It might just be conditions today, Mick. approximately six miles from Mick. I'm not sure whether conditions are that good out here today. Uh, okay Paul, all copied and recorded. I'll stop the recording now. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it just shows you what three miles makes. Are you going to try the other radio or not? Yeah, Rog, I'm going to switch over to the other radio now, Rog. OK, uh, we're now on the Easy Com. We're now on the Easy Com at location B, approximately six miles, Mick. This is also doing four watts, but uh, I think, like I say, it's either conditions, it must be conditions today, because we certainly got better a better um, reception at your end on the last test that we did. I wonder how it sounds at your end, testing one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, there's not a lot of difference between the two. Uh, I'm stopping the recording now, and uh, yes, it just shows you it's amazing. You say I'm all right, but you're the other way round. So uh, it's funny, isn't it, Paul? Interesting. I mean, if you watch the EasyCom video uh, for this bad boy, we certainly had better uh, better uh, luck out here with that on that video. So I think it's just conditions today, but um, it is a very tricky uh, test, this one. The terrain is quite rough between me and Mick, so that's why we do these. You don't want to make it easy for these sets, but still, nonetheless, I mean, uh, they're amazing these things are 40 years old now aren't they look and uh still working great i mean i uh i noticed on this one tuning around um there was actually activity on i don't know if yesterday is uh, the anniversary has meant that people have got them out in their cars a bit but let's just have a little tune around that we can find <laughs> And um, I know it's 
that <laughs> that's strange isn't it right another super duper rescue radio i think you'll probably agree and uh, I mean, it certainly sounded lovely didn't it at the first location i think conditions just a bit dodgy today uh for on the transmit side but certainly receive absolutely great and uh you know this is a well, I mean, it's a 40 years old. This is a an antique, really, in terms of communication equipment. If you look at where we've we've come now with modern technology, but um, still, nonetheless, I think these it's important to keep these things in good shape um, because they're part of the history of radio. And if you're watching this channel, you're probably uh, interested in that. So, okay, well, thanks ever so much for joining us again on another test of these radios. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you already aren't subscribed. And we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.